What's going on, everybody? This is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen. And make sure to connect with me on my Instagram if you haven't had the opportunity to do so. So today, we're going to be showing you five techniques pro players are using that you probably don't even know about. These tricks can be game changers. We know it's hard, okay, to keep up with how often a new phasing trick or similar move is discovered. In this video, guys, we compiled the ones we thought were most useful and that we don't see players performing often. Some of these can take some practice to master, okay? But for how impactful they can end up being, that practice is very much worth it. Take my word for it. So, before we get started, Pro Guys has a small announcement to make. We are adding a ton of new features to our site, which include 1. Exclusive guide videos for our Pro members every single day. 2. Pro Pass now grants access to all games, such as League of Legends, Smash Brothers, CSGO, and Overwatch. More free coaching passes and points for InstaPro if you're a pro member. So head on over to Pro Guys by clicking the link in the description below. All right, let's get down to business. How often have you found yourself being pressured by an opponent inside your one by one? When they make it inside your box, the first line of defense is usually to block them off with a ramp. But once you put that ramp up, what's a good play to make after that? Well, there's one trick, guys, that utilizes structure phasing that can help you pick limbs in sticky situations like this. If your back is fully up against the wall and you place or edit a ramp in front of you, it'll be stuck in phase mode. That means you can't even shoot through it as if it wasn't there at all. Players don't ever expect to be shot since they see what looks like just a normal ramp in front of them, right? It won't be completely normal looking as phase structures turn yellow as an indicator, but it's still normal enough looking that most players won't even notice what's up. There is a bit of a risk involved though, as your opponent can shoot back. But again, most don't even know about this interaction and will probably just treat the situation as if there's still a ramp right in front of them. So, how do you do it? You know what, that's a really good question. I'm really loving this interaction. You can start with just a forward facing ramp in your box. Edit it backward, then make sure your back is up against the wall behind you. So, edit the ramp again, back into the forward motion. As long as you keep your back against the wall, the ramp can now be shot through. From here, you literally just shoot at your opponent as if the ramp isn't even there. You have to keep your back against the wall to keep it phased, as even the slightest movement forward will turn it normal again. You're able to move a little to the left and right, but you gotta make sure, you gotta make sure your back stays on the wall. You guys got it? A player doesn't even have to be inside your box for this to even be useful. If you're low on health and a player is trying to replace your wall, you can set up this ramp trick. They most likely won't even expect it, and you'll be ready to shoot when they edit the wall. While it's somewhat a situational technique, guys, almost nobody expects to be shot through a ramp. This move can prevent death in the desperate of desperate situations. Your enemy won't even know what hit them. Man, you guys need to do this every game. This is too cool. A while ago, Epic added functionality to traps that allow them to be placed along with the floor piece. Now it's become much easier to just quickly edit your wall and go for a trap. Pro players have been doing this now for a few months, but with how easy it is and how effective it is, everybody should just learn how to do it. And I'm talking to you. Yeah, you, right there, I see. So here's a trick using that trap placing mechanic that you can just use to defend yourself while turtling. Whenever you have a player trying to break through your wall, you edit the top right corner of it, right? Then you quickly swap to your trap and place it above them. Reset the edit immediately so that they don't just jump inside your box for safety. From here, you can edit again, this time lay down the pressure as your opponent desperately tries to avoid getting hit. You can do this all from behind cover with this edit, which should keep you protected even if your opponent has their gun ready. That's the part of what makes this technique so great. Usually, when you go in for an edit play, you end up exposing yourself for a brief period, which we all know is risky. It takes time to pull out a weapon, and you might get hit when you peek for the shot. With the trap, however, you're going to be able to place it without any worry of getting hit. You just need to make sure it's a triangle edit and that you're well behind the wall. There is a fair bit of room where the wall covers you completely while you can still place the trap. But if you move too far to the opposite side, well, it's not gonna be placeable. So for this technique to work, you're gonna need to make sure that you can place the trap. That means there should be no structure there already. If there is, it can still be done, but the structure can't belong to an opponent. It'll have to be either your floor piece or a natural structure anybody can just place traps on. If they do own the piece above them, it is possible to place the trap on the sides with the wall instead. But for some reason, placing traps on the sides is just pretty finicky and it just doesn't happen very often. This trap technique is why it's so important, guys, to build cover first before going for a wall replace. It can slow down the process of wall replacing, but by giving up some speed, you're protecting yourself completely from somebody being able to perform this trick on you. 
So here's another trick that you can use to deal with somebody turtling in their box. You know the little critical strike target that pops up when you harvest structures? Well, there is a way to hit that through your own ramp. Normally you can't hit things through another build, so whoever is inside the box won't be expecting their wall to break. To do it, hey, just jump and pickaxe the very top of a wall. If you do it correctly, the harvesting target will appear up there. From here, put yourself on top of a ramp facing the wall. Surprisingly, you're able to hit that mark through your ramp here. Then you can just replace the wall with your own as if the ramp isn't even there. Edit your stairs and the wall open to go for the kill. You need to be quick though. You only have a few seconds to pull this off. The target will eventually fade, but it should still leave you enough time to get in a couple of distraction swings. Typically, you know, players will swap to protect their roof as soon as they see you jump on a ramp. But that distraction swing on the roof can help ensure that they aren't still turbo building the wall. So, how can you prevent this from happening to you? That's another good question, guys. I love it. Well, if you see your opponent jump up to swing at your wall, that's the first clue. If they place a ramp immediately afterward, hey, it's a dead giveaway. From here, you can edit out and go in for an aggressive play if you like, since you know exactly what they're going to be doing. Or just sit back and just hold your turbo boat on your wall, making sure to repair if it's not at full health. So, this mechanic is probably unattended, so there is a good chance it'll get patched eventually. Hey, it's just how it is. You know, you used to be able to hit the harvesting target through any structures in the past, just as long as your crosshair ended up over it. But that ended up getting fixed for pretty much the same reason. In the meantime though, you know, you should just be able to just get some pretty easy wall replaces against any players that don't know this trick. Okay, so we got something else for you, you guys ready? Here is a move that is much more difficult to pull off, but it's still starting to see some use. It's called, ladies and gentlemen, the Ramp Dash, or the EJ Dash, named after EJ Ladd who made this popular on his channel. The basic concept behind this clever ability is to use the structure phasing mechanics to propel yourself forward with the ramp. You do that first by making sure you're in the right position. This is around the point where your character's neck is just above the ramp, but it can depend on which skin you're using. Then you place a ramp and jump immediately. If done right, you should notice yourself getting launched forward a little bit. Okay, so what's the point of this technique? You know what guys, you guys are spot on. Another great question. In Battle Royale, it's probably the most practical when running from the storm or trying to get from one area to the next. Okay, so just spend time watching Doves, Booga, or Clicks, and you're going to see them using this a lot to rotate around the map. With how unavailable mobility is in Season X, they're doing it so that they can get around a little faster. You could use it in build battles too, but just remember, remember to catch yourself on something. We even saw Mongrel use it to save himself from the storm in what was probably the most intense moment of the entire World Cup. He didn't get the kill, but it was still crazy to see it happen. One great part of ramp dashing is that you can use it to force your way past other structures. Using the ramp dash to phase through builds has been done by pros for several months now. It's one of the ways they end fights very quickly. You basically launch yourself forward the same way, but you swing to break the wall as you reach it. You can also do it on the opposite end to launch yourself out of your own box, editing it open so you can fly at your opponent. Okay, so this one's a bit harder to pull up, but the speed at which you fly out will confuse your opponent and make you harder to hit. So in EJ's videos explaining this trick, he shows a variety of ways to do it. For example, it doesn't need to be a plain ramp. You can also just launch yourself by editing a cone. He also incorporated them into his own build battles as part of his high ground retake as an aggressive move for a surprise shot. With how difficult this skill is to pull off, we're only just starting to see pro players practice this. As time goes on though guys, I guarantee the pros are going to perfect this ability and we're going to definitely start seeing them use this a lot more. I can see the future. As far as Fortnite techniques go, this is one of the most innovative and brilliant uses the community has seen in a long time. When Cypher PK did it on stream, I mean it went posted on Reddit and blew up. If you haven't seen it by now, take a look. Basically, a shockwave grenade tossed one tile away from you will consistently launch you backward through all build for three tiles. At that third tile, you'll stop breaking build. So with the right setup, you can pull this off 100% of the time. Let's take a closer look at how Cypher sets it up. He finds his target sitting in there one by one, right? Then builds out three floor pieces from it. He also places a completely optional ramp piece. But it's not a bad idea since it can help protect you if they edit to look for shots. Cypher positions himself at the end of the second tile, then tosses the shockwave in front of him at the end of the third tile. With his trap key ready, once he launches in, he puts the trap where the wall once used to be, then puts some stairs for protection. One quick tip guys we found when testing this out, 
If you spam click your trap, you might end up placing it on the floor in front of their one by one, not on the wall. So to avoid this, just wait a tiny bit before placing the trap. Or you could just manually place the wall, then swap to your trap if that feels more natural. So the only time this technique doesn't work is if they're hugging the wall opposite of the one you trap. Although that isn't likely something that could happen, as most players tend to just hang out in the middle of their box, and there isn't really anything that can be done to react to this play. Once the victim realizes what's happened to them, they're getting hit for 150 damage and are on their way to the grave. All right, that probably sounded a little depressing, but <laughs> you get what I mean. At most, somebody with lightning fast reactions could edit out from the box, but that's unlikely considering how quickly it happens. Even though most of them were discovered months ago, they're still very much useful in today's meta, and we just don't see enough players using them, despite them not being brand new tricks. But even if you knew them, hopefully we're able to remind you or explain them in a way that ends up positively impacting your gameplay. As always, guys, we appreciate your viewership, so thanks for watching. Once again, this is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen, and make sure to connect with me on my Instagram. We got a lot more coming at you from Pro Guys.